go. What's going on? <laughs> That's how I open it. <laughs> That's always what I do when I have guests. Starting like I'm a gamer girl, but then I'm not. Okay, hi everyone. It's on my Guri, also known as Belle. And this is Space Dirt. Yeah, I have a face. If you don't know, Space Dirt also runs a linguistics and world building channel and does way more world building and linguistics. Today, we're gonna cook, I mean, as authentic of a Thulean meal as we can possibly manage. So we're going to make rheumatoid meat along with a barley bread yes. that Space Dirt apparently knows how to make. So I'm gonna be learning about that today, learning about barley and stuff, that's great. Only problem was, rheumatoids don't exist. So I was like, well, let's get alpaca meat. And so I speed shipped in alpaca meat from the only alpaca farm I could find. Mm -hmm. And lo and behold, they didn't even ship it. They were like, oh, what if we just didn't ship the food? And then I, <laughs> so we don't actually have alpaca meat. That was the, the whole premise of this collab I want you all to know. Yeah. Um, we tried, we were really trying hard to be fancy. Uh, we didn't. So instead we have, um, we have this bison meat today that we're going to eat instead. It's still kind of extra. I don't yeah. usually eat bison meat. I don't, I haven't had it since I was like tiny. And back then, I don't think I appreciated it. So we're going to, we're still trying new yes. meat today. It's just not a good, I don't know. This is as good as we're going to be. It'll be fine. It'll be fine. It'll be fine. All right, cool. Guys, look how cute this cup is. I just, I need the audience to see also. <laughs> they're, they're little Russian nesting dolls. Yes. So we are cooking here by um, volume instead of weight because that's just how the recipe is, even though it's probably the inferior way to do it, but that's how it's going to be. Probably. Um, so. Well, in Thule, I don't actually have official measurements, so they all measure with the heart in my head. So right here, just what we're doing, I'm using this recipe um, just for, I guess, context of where I got this recipe. This is a family recipe of mine. My family, we call it Fleischkickle, or in the more accurate German pronunciation, it would be Fleischkickle or something like that. So this is unique in that it is very similar to a Russian Chibereki, because my family were ethnic Germans that were given land by the Black Sea, by the Russian Tsar, and they stayed there for a good amount of time. Um, and adopted some of the local cuisine, and then they came over. Um, my family settled in North Dakota, where you can actually find Fleischkiegel still in, like, stands. They've got, in, you know, instead of, like, hot dog carts, they have Fleischkiegel carts. Um, so this is very similar to a um, Chibideki, and so I'm using my family's recipe, of course, with um, updated ingredients. They used a mixture of beef and pork instead of, you know, bison. Oh, we have the fancy thing over here. Mm -hmm. They would also not have fancy mi Well, actually, they might have fancy mixers in yeah. Thule. I've seen, actually, I've gone out. They um, took me, my grandpa and his brothers took me to the house that they were born in. Um, it's actually made out of dirt. Well, the houses? Yes. Wow. It's, so it's, if you've ever heard of like the pioneer sod houses, it was that, it had like plaster outside. But my great grandfather was an electrician, so it also had mm -hmm. electricity and it's partially collapsed, but it is still standing out there in the middle of a farm field. And so it was a very surreal experience, like going into this like two room house with like, you know, ruins of stuff in there and being like, oh wow. Of course they moved into a more normal farmhouse later, but so that's, that's where this inspiration comes from. If you ask like a German what Fleischkickle is, they'd say a different thing. It happens a lot in our family recipes. Like we have something that we call, in our Americanized accents, we call it Kuchen, but in German it would be Kuchen. And that's just the word for cake in German. Oh. For us, it refers to a very specific custard pie. Okay. In it. Yeah, so it's it's just a lot of recipe borrowing because this originally, the Chibereki, came from the, um, Crimean Tatar people. Mm -hmm. um, I forget what they call it in their language. It's it's similar to the Russian name, and then we just kind of took that and we're like, oh, Fleischkiefer. This is definitely scant on flour, but that's okay because um, I don't want a huge amount of dough. Thick enough while we wait. Um, we're just gonna mix this together. We can just add a little bit more. And I was scant on the flour, but it was pretty accurate with the other measurements. More. That makes sense. At like battery, this is like sort of cookie dough consistency, so we're gonna add a little bit more flour. And the other flour measurements we did is scant. This is why you wanna cook by weight instead of volume, which we're not doing. 
because America. Yeah, America. And I think we will need this a little bit, so I believe if if we were using barley, we wouldn't really need to because kneading wouldn't be super effective mm -hmm. um, since the gluten content is so low. However, since we are using spelt as an approximation for barley, um, that should approximate it, but we might actually be able to knead it a little bit just to build up some of that gluten. Okay, this is looking good. It's sort of, um, the way that I have made it before, it sort of has this consistency where it flakes a little bit, but it's still quite sticky. Mm -hmm. um, so still definitely a little grainy, probably should have sifted the flour, but I forgot my sifter, so. That's okay. Yeah, we'll be fine. We're doing it live. Yes, <laughs> we'll do it live. <laughs> Everyone, please, if you are using knives, um, be careful. Yes. Because I, as a person who just chopped off her fingertip last, <laughs> last week, <laughs> um, it's not fun. It's a lot of blood, and now I can't think, feel so good in that fingertip, so make sure that um, you keep your fingertips, okay? Don't... Uh -huh. <laughs> Practice good cooking safety. Yes. Um, use, use the claw technique. Mm-hmm. Mince these up for the purposes of this recipe. Add this up here. It does already have a good bit of liquid in it, which is actually good for our purposes, because what we want in this case is we want this to be spreadable. Mm, okay. But, okay. Just a little bit of the aromatics. Yay! And then normally, so if you were using like a, what I would normally do with like ground pork and ground beef, it wouldn't have a lot of liquid in it, so it wouldn't spread quite as easily, but this already has quite a bit um, due to the packaging. So I will only add a little bit of water to get it to that um, consistency that we want. So that should be good. So we have that, our dough, and now it's time to assemble. All right, assembly time. Yeah, so this is the most fun part, the assembly. But yeah, let's just do the goat bill. Let me get Yeah, you're right. So then, normally, I like to flour the surface. If any of you all watching have never um, rolled anything out before, the That's reason how. that you switch, yeah, this is how, but also the reason you switch directions is so that it um, uh, is even and it doesn't just all roll in one direction. Yes. Yeah. These might not be completely even, but that is not super difficult to take care of. Just a quick little spoon. You're going to take a little bit of the meat, not a lot, that's the key. And you're going to take that and just sort of spread it in this little strip here. So then what we're going to do then is what you want to do is I did this the opposite way, but you want to dip your finger in your your sealing liquid you just wet the edges like this make it nice and then you want to fold it over nicely so this is a little bit uneven but it should be fine and then just take two fingers and just crimp that edge like that and you should have one of these and then you can use a knife or a small plate a small plate tends to be what i like to use and then you just want to roll it over here and just sort of chop off that very end bit. Mm -hmm, okay. And you okay. have a little bit of extra dough that you can also throw in there. So the dough goes a long way. At this point, you might be curious how we even came to this recipe in the first place. And quite frankly, it starts from ingredients. I have thought a lot about the food that you have in available in Nova Thule, just because it's under it's kind of underground like it only gets sun twice a day at dawn and dusk because it's under an entire other continent it's really cold it, it's tall enough the upper continent is high enough up that you have entire weather systems forming under it so it's cold it's rainy it's snowing year-round and like what do you eat in that case 
Well, so I invented a mountainous barley that's black, so it's absorbing all the light it possibly can. And this, I thought, would be a nice contrast to the primarily wheat-based diets of the southerners. Additionally, um, I really like the idea of them using these rumators for most things, sort of like how alpacas and llamas are really central to Andean life. So they really end up using their rumators for their meat, their bones, their tongues, their brains, uh, their blood, you know, they'll use all the parts of it. And just because, you know, that's what they have available. Fermented uh, milk is another one I want to try. I know that fermented horse milk is a huge drink up in uh, Mongolia, Northeast Asia area. I think that they would definitely ferment their rumator milk. I hear that the drink Milkis uh, or Katapisu or sorry, Calpico, is um, kind of a close approximation of what that tastes like, but obviously I haven't had the real thing yet, so I couldn't tell you. Drop in the comments, by the way, if your fantasy world has any ridiculous foods that you would love to try someday, or even just, you know, real life foods that you'd like to try someday that you've made more common in your fantasy world than in your home culture, I would be super interested to learn more about weird foods. Oh, it tastes a lot. Yeah. This will get them to a nice... But it's fine. This will be something. I'll, it's fine, I'll figure it out. I'll have all the footage, it'll be fine. Okay, ready? Yep. There we go. Beautiful. We're gonna take two at a time. Beautiful. I'm gonna cut to this b-roll all of the time now. This looks so good. It's so aesthetic yeah. also. Like right. I think if you, if we put like a like a sapia filter over this. Oh yeah. It's like, yeah, that could be used in anything. It's puffing up, which it is good. Is. This one's got a little hole in it, which is not ideal, but it'll be fine. Normally, there wouldn't normally be holes, so it, you, yeah. know, you get this, and then you bite off the end. Mm-hmm. There we go. So it's really hot in here. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's a secret. <laughs> Ignore that. <laughs> that's good. <laughs> so, shut up. <laughs> um, basically, blow into here. And then if you have some sort of dipping sauce that you want, you can like put it in this little cavity. Oh, okay. But then if not, you just eat it straight, which is normally how I do it. Okay. Describe and taste. It's nice. I'm definitely getting a lot of that thyme. The mm. bison's nice. Um, doesn't cut through as much. I mean, I took out the whole thing when I ate it. <laughs> um, but mm. it does also nice flavor, I would say. It's pretty good. Pretty good for, for this is my first time modifying this recipe, so I'd say it turned out pretty good. All right. It's All right. Good. I have to I have to try it now. Here, yeah. I'll I'm passing you the camera. Yeah. Move we'll by at the top first. Step by at the end, and then blow in that hole. Ooh, I'm very hot. Yeah. So you got to do that. Get the get the new air in. Mm. There's a lot of crunchier than I was expecting it to be. Mm -hmm. And it, I don't know if it makes sense because it's fried, but that's a really rich, rich taste. Yeah. Yeah. Very, it's almost kind of nutty. Yes. Yeah. yeah. That's the thing with um, barley and spelt flour, so it's, it's similar in taste to that. Maybe this is just because I'm an American, but I feel like this could use way more salt. <laughs> yeah, it's okay. Mmm. I got a little bit of the meat there. Yeah, once you get the meat, the dough itself is not salted. Mmm. Mmm. Wow. That's really good. Once you get the meat, yeah. That's yeah. so much better. Um, it's so flavorful. It's, I mean, very hearty. You really get the time, huh? 
Mm. Or at least I did when I did it. And I can taste the onion now too. All right, that's really good. Wow. Well, I would not want this. I think I think it would be too much. I think Thulians would just want to like de dig into the like richness, and they'd be mm. like, okay, well, like just dip it in like a chilled bechamel sauce or something like yeah. that. And I'd be like, that's so much. And then again, if they did it with like um like fermented milk, that would maybe cut through. Mm -hmm. mm. No, I know um a lot of well, a lot of what people do in North Dakota with them is that they'll bite open the hole and then they'll put ketchup down it. Oh, okay. Mm. There we go. Found it. Oh. <laughs> mm -hmm. I really like the flavor of the bison too. That's really good. That's really good. I I don't know how to describe it other than it definitely just tastes like a different meat. <laughs> because in my memory, I had this at like a like a burger place, mm -hmm. and I remember just being like, this still just tastes like yeah, like a like a burger. But a this does not. They, yeah, a lot of times they mix it. Oh, that's probably why then. This does not taste. Mm -hmm. At least I think they mix it. Don't quote me on that. Um, I bet some places do. I think not burgery. This is a lot leaner. Mm -hmm. I might. I don't know. My good. I don't have good cooking work. Yeah. So that's that's all I got for you. <laughs> I'm gonna try the goat milk real quick here because I've never had goat milk before either. So here we go. This is a, mm, this is closer to what we're mm, asking for because they yes. do they do have room for milk. Is it milky? Is it it's goat? milky. It tastes <laughs> like milk. It does taste a little different, but it's not as significant as like. Duck egg versus regular eggs I or see. something, which is kind of what I was expecting. I was expecting it to be super different, mm -hmm. or like goat cheese tastes super differently. It has a lot more of that like, yeah. tang. This does not. This just tastes okay. like. I I'm not milk. the best person to compare because I can't eat dairy. So. Oh, well, there you go. There you go. I also can't eat. I'm also lactose yeah. intolerant, but I just <laughs> suffer. But that's fair. I, if you if you if you actually well, suffer, I'm not I'm lactose intolerant. I'm allergic to some other weird protein, but I can't have goat cheese for some reason. At least that's what I've been told. That's very weird. Well, there you go. There's that. Yeah. What did we learn today? We learned... From doing all this cooking, I really got a much better sense of what the Thulean flavor profile would be in their cooking, especially since I got to taste uh, spelt, which is close enough to barley, that with that like nuttier taste, that gives me a really good idea of how the taste would permeate a lot of their food. That would be like their expected comfort taste. That's the default palate for them. And then having it with meat that isn't something that I usually have sort of gave me a good idea of like how rich this is all gonna be. Like, cause it's all gonna be really rich and protein filled and you're gonna be able to taste that. Um, but you're also not gonna get like a lot, it's not gonna truly bring out all the flavors cause you're not gonna have a lot of um, variants of stuff. Like, mm, sure they have salt, but it's not gonna be the same extent that the average um, person in the United States is going to eat salt. All of our stuff is so oversalted. If you haven't been here, you would know. And also, um, all of our stuff also has added sugar and they're not going to have that. And um, you can really taste that in the food. They're going to have a couple of really strong herby flavors that they're going to go after, like the thyme um, or savory things like the onion, which would be replaced with a death canvas bulb. And that's poisonous. So that's hilarious. Um, and something I really noticed also is after eating this, like I have a lot more sensitive of stomach. So I was like feeling really heavy and kind of sluggish, but presumably they would feel this less so because this is their average diet. And as I understand, like there's, I know there's this one, like a subgroup of people in Africa who eat a lot of dairy to the point that it would seem like they would have bad heart health. Um, a lot of dairy, a lot of meat, but they don't because they've evolved to just mostly eat that stuff. And that's kind of also how I would imagine that Thulians would be. So maybe they wouldn't, but they also are ingesting literal poison in a lot of their food. Like they also put tobacco leaves on their food, which if you, um, tobacco is already like not great, the greatest thing for you. But then if you're also um, eating it when you shouldn't be, that's gonna be really bad for you. So maybe they would feel sluggish after all their meals. Their tea and coffee is not gonna be nearly as tangy as I th initially thought. I always assumed that all of their tea and coffee, by the way, they do mushroom coffee. Um, I wasn't able to get mushroom coffee for this video, but I, that's also something in the future that I'd like to try. Um, just to, you know, get a full sense of what my dearest darling Arla Sarah is eating on a day-to-day -day basis, what she considers to be her default food, um, because that's gonna shape how she reacts to food in other parts of the world and what food she considers to be delicacies and what foods she considers to be uh, common. 
So yeah, I'm I'm really excited to continue exploring this sort of thing, and it was super wonderful working with Space Dirt today. I learned that I can make a sub of a lot of different ingredients, and it still works mostly fine. Yeah, yeah. No, that's um, that's the real secret to cooking. That it doesn't really matter. The ingredients don't matter, and neither do the amount. Yeah. <laughs> <I think. laughs> oh. All right. Well, thanks so much for watching, okay. and I will see you all on the flippity flop. Take care. All right, cool, that you can cut now. Okay.